Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video. So the testing server has once again reopened for us DECA partners. We were given a very nice chance to test out the new Vault UI, as well as the new upcoming high-tech terror dungeon, modeled after the Mad Lab, along with its four new UT items. Can't imagine it'll be too long before this is available to the public. Usually these things don't take very long to get out there on prod, but I can't say for sure. From what I've experienced, however, these seem pretty finished. I was very happy with what I was seeing. First things first, let's take a look at that new vault. Already you can see that they have done away with the array of individual chests in favor of a cleaner, more concentrated single chest, making the entire vault much smaller. And the sides are even open now, so any class can access the outside of the vault. When walking over to your chest, the vault tab automatically opens up. And if you walk away, it disappears. In here, we have a lot of different filters you can use. You can sort by weapon, ability, armor, accessory, consumable, token, pet. You can go alphabetically by feed power, the type, or just search up the item specifically. You can even toggle multiple filters at once, so you can really get whatever kind of picture you want. And a feature I really like is how if you walk away and come back to your vault, the last screen that you were on will still be there. While I do kind of miss having my 50 or so chests out in the open, definitely made the vault look more extravagant extravagant and rich. I can't deny that these search tools are fantastic, especially when it comes to the gift chest. No longer do you have to leave your vault and come back to refresh all of your gift chests. Now you can view everything at once in the same fashion. To the right, we have the new potion storage, a vault dedicated exclusively to stat potions. It can only hold up to 16 at first, but you can upgrade it a total of three times. Level two lets you hold 64, level three, 128, and level four, 256. So, not a hefty cost, all things considered. Plus, you can keep storing your potions in the regular vault in the meantime. Although, to my surprise, greater potions actually count as two potions in the potion vault. Despite the fact that they are indeed a single potion, they are valued as two, which I feel like is kind of counterproductive to why greater potions exist in the first place. But regardless, this is a great system. Now let's move on to the dungeon, high-tech terror. I don't know where it's going to drop. I would suspect it has something to do with the Mad Lab, but because it's a single boss fight, it looks like a Court of Oryx dungeon. So, I won't speculate any further on that. I thought the portal for this place was really cool. It has the alternating green and blue goo. Once you're inside, you'll see that we have nine squares of whatever, I forget what this stuff is called, the blue goo, I'm just gonna call it, and Pharaoh will appear in the center. All around him, the pools will have these cameras or turrets coming out of them, and you have to destroy all of them to push the boss into his final phase. And each time you destroy one, the blue goo turns green, Pharaoh appears inside of it, becomes hexed, you get as much damage in as you can, there's a cap on how much you can do, but if you wait too long, he will leave eventually. Afterwards, the turret comes back, now with an accompanying tentacle, and if you destroy it a second time, the iron grate will be pulled over top of it, so now you can walk over it without being hexed. Every time you destroy one of these turrets, Feral gains a new attack, and sometimes a new room hazard, like these glowing green orbs, or this weird UFO cart thing that has some of the most wild attack patterns I've seen. In fact, this whole dungeon, as it continues moving forward, has some of the craziest patterns in any realm boss. Like, this is certainly not one of the hardest bosses in the game, but it's probably one of the most chaotic and strange fights, and I mean that in a good way. I feel like it's somewhat comparable to Zolotl's fight. Granted, this was also the first time Vital Combat was on testing, so everything is substantially harder than it once was, but it didn't feel like that final phase in the thicket, where you have all of these carefully calculated attack patterns that overlap at certain points. It's more akin to the Marble Colossus tentacle phase, where you have wild cards like the tower spawns and exploding rocks. Feels like we have multiple separate attacks that just so happen to intersect every now and again. It's more chaotic in this sense, and I think it leads to a honestly refreshing take on a boss fight. It just barely teeters on messy at points, but I had so much fun fighting it. And a lot of times when it looked like there was about to be too much on screen at once, one of the other patterns would fade out. You have attacks that remain stationary, stuff that snakes out slowly, others that home in on you. Feral has this one main attack where the bullets move inward then out. It's immediately iconic. It took me a few attempts to actually complete this, and even then I was using some of the most insane gear you can imagine, yet I still struggle. It's always hard to gauge how this is going to play out in large groups, but with how much is going on screen at one time, I think DECA really should lower that player opacity amount, because it's going to be hard to see all those shots, especially because most of them are green and blue, which kind of blend into the background. I feel like they could make that UFO cart thing stand out more, like flash before it appears, because there were so many times where I just suddenly realized I was standing on it. Like, it's easy to see looking back on footage, but when you're in the moment trying to dodge 46 other things at once, you don't always see those things. I was very happy to see that there was no confusion of any kind, though. That was quite nice. 
I really enjoyed this fight. It felt very hectic and even overwhelming, but it also felt incredibly dodgeable. When I actually focused and tried my hardest, I was able to dodge things that I didn't think I would be able to. Since you have so many different shots flying at their own amplitudes, there's a bit of a sensory overload on what you should dodge first and how. But damage values were fair, nothing was extremely high or too low. There's a super cool laser beam attack that's kind of hard to see if you're backed up against a wall, you won't be able to see Feral charging it up, but it's probably like the most video game thing I've seen a boss do in this game. And it just felt really good to fight. It was fun to figure out. I know I say this like every time a new boss comes out, but this is probably one of my new favorites. I'll see how that opinion holds up over time, but until then, we've got some loot to cover. From the loot that I got, there was a Greater Wisdom Potion and a single Mana Pot, along with a Def Effusion and a Transformation Potion, which was very fitting. I actually got a white bag, so I did end up getting the ring, which pretty much confirms that all four of the items in this dungeon are going to be white bags. And when we take a closer look at the stats, I think that's pretty clear why. We have a Staff, Bow, Quiver, and Ring. And just like Feral, all of these items have an acronym as their name. The staff is literally called Staff. Except for the Ring, however. That one's called I. Unfortunately, the server would crash every time I used the weapons, so all I can really do is show off the stats here. The big takeaway here is that there's this burst delay. The weapons will fire for a little bit, then they have a delay. Like Feral's attack, they also speed up and slow down at certain points, and they have quite the amplitude. But the rate of fire is high, XP bonus is high, and the bow has a very similar behavior. As does the quiver, but I was actually able to test that one out. It's got quite a delay on it, it stays on your body and then flies out, so it's much harder to aim. The mana cost is also much higher but you get a four second paralyze at insanely high range and really good damage. The initial shot is pretty big, but it has this trail behind it. So if you're able to nail the first paralyze, the other shots will follow suit. Pretty interesting take on an item. I usually don't like the slower approach to weapons and whatnot, but this one I actually enjoyed. Of course, with the higher mana cost, you can't spam this nearly as much. Drains pretty fast, balancing sake, of course. And then we have the eye ring, which stat wise is a slightly better experimental ring. Five def and vit, 70 health and mana, but a Upon taking a hit, not damage, you don't have to receive any damage, but if you get hit by an enemy, however many times in a row there's no cooldown, it will retaliate with a 300 to 400 damage physical attack at a rather impressive 10 range. So if you're getting harassed by a bunch of small minions that don't really hurt that much, this ring can actually clean up pretty well. This might be my favorite part of the set just on that fact alone. Overall though, it never ceases to amaze me how frequently new content is coming out. Feels like every few months we're either getting a new dungeon, big quality of life changes, an event, or cool opportunities like this to try out new content. In the meantime, that's all I've got for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like what you see. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.